morning. Good morning, everyone. It's Leela Gonzalez, and I'm getting ready to invite Elle Ingalls on. How are you today? I'm an author, speaker, coach, Bowspring Yogini, and here today to share a little bit more about the Bowspring and Pressure Free Method. Elle is in Michigan. I'm in Colorado. Where are you? I'd love to see today if you could comment for us. Let us, and I just got some emails. Good morning. I love the hearts. I just got some emails from people in Africa. In Spain. So wherever you are in the world this morning, let us know. Send us a little heart or like or share or give us a, an idea what city you're in around the world. I love that. Good morning. Here's I love that. Good morning. It's such a beautiful color. You look great. How are you? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm on a blank, a blank background so people can really see what I'm doing <laughs> instead of hiding. So are you ready? I'm ready, I'm ready. All right, everybody, we're just gonna go ahead and get started. So if anybody's out there watching now, get your bodies up, stand up, and let's do a little movement. Today we're gonna do three things. We're gonna open your heart, we're gonna open your hips, and we're gonna let your head open it, okay? So first things first, we start with the heart, right? So we say, first things first, we start with the heart. First things first, we start with the heart. First things first, yeah, we start with the heart. Woo! First things first, we start with the heart. And then you get, you know, you see, you smile, you get in the mood, you're ready. So go ahead and touch your heart on the front. Let your elbows go forward. Send your rib cage back and bend your knees a little. Tuck your chin, and we're going to get into the back ribs this morning. Let your back ribs go side to side, almost like you're massaging. Bend over just a little. Send your low ribs up, and almost like a ribs go up. And what you'll notice, ladies and gentlemen, if you're out there, <laughs> it'll feel a little sticky. It'll feel There she is. <laughs> hey, Cynthia. Hey, Tabitha. Move your body. Yeah. So, turtle shell stays up. Press your toes down. Keep yourself rooted. And then take your hands on your low ribs. Elbows stay forward. And lift up your head. Keep your back ribs really full. Yeah, now lift your ribs so they're more perpendicular to the earth. So your ribs now are up and down. Yeah. Then genie arms, so arms uh, cross over, fingertips touch, and then go side to side. So you open your side ribs now. Open your side ribs. Open the place where the sun doesn't shine usually. <laughs> I, I tell people to air out their armpits, Leela. Air out your armpits. Yeah, it feels so good because your ribs are under here, too. You just don't realize it. And then pause. Send your elbows forward, your ribs back, and then take little pulses up and down. Let your mouth open and your belly soften. And as you breathe in, imagine you're breathing in divine love. And you're breathing out anything stale in your body. Breathing in divine love. Allowing your body to receive divine love. And then exhaling anything stale out of your body. And then ecstasy arms, hands by your head. Let's face forward just a little. Yeah. And then... Toes down to stay rooted, and we'll go a little side bend. Now, when you go to the side, bring your hips back instead of under. Back, so then your belly gets longer. And then, pulse up and down. And imagine your ribs are expanding with each breath, so even the inside of your rib cage expands all the way around on the back, on the sides, and on the front. Keep your toes down, hips back, 
Pause with your hips low. Glutes go back. Pull your heels back. And then open your throat. It feels a little vulnerable, but let your throat open. And then three more pulses, down and up. Breathe in divine love. And breathe out anything stale. Let your body receive more light and love here. Very open. And then pause with your hips low. And what we call this is bow, arc, and then we bow and twist. So from your right ribs, lift up a little to the sky. So you do just a little twist and then elbows down, elbows up, and you're whittling your waist here. Can you feel that? Your low ribs lift up and lift from your waist. Cool. I feel it. You feel it? Yeah, one more time. Knees low, hips low, heart high. And then come back to center. Touch your seat, hands forward, elbows wide, and breathe. And what do you feel? Hey, Tabitha. Hey, Cynthia. Nice to see you. If this is resonating with anybody, if anybody's doing it with us, let me know how you feel. How do you feel, babe? How do I feel? Um, well, this whole side feels super light, like very, very light. <laughs> this feels crunched still. Let's get it uncrunched. What do you say? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get it uncrunched. Okay. Ecstasy arms. Your tippy toes down to keep you rooted. And then lean up and over. And then pulse down and up. So you get into the shape and then you pulse to help open up even more. Let your, your chin turn just a little to the right. Yeah. And then you get a little bit more hips back. A little more hard up. And then pause. Let your head go up. Throat open. Three more pulses. Inhale. Let divine love come in. Exhale. Breathe out anything stale. Inhale. Breathe in divine light and love. Let your body receive. And exhale anything stale that's no longer serving. Pause with your hips low, toes down to root. And then from your low ribs, left ribs, lift up. And little teeny twists right at your low ribs. And that helps whittle your waist. A couple more times, exhaling out. Inhaling, back ribs lift. And then come to center. And notice if your sides are more even now. Yeah. <laughs> Look at her smile. I like to be even. Oh, Lucy, Son, and Maddie, thanks so much for joining. I saw Kristen join too. Thanks everybody for coming on. This is Wild Bowspring Yoga. This is my friend Lilo Gonzalez, and I am learning how to totally recraft my body. It's really amazing experience so thanks for everyone joining us yeah can l can you do me a favor i'd like to share that you know you're somebody who's already quite aware of your body and yet this is a whole nother level right so can you just Absolutely. speak to that a little bit yeah so i um you know i've been an athlete my whole life and i've done all kinds of practices i've been in different yoga studios and just practiced yoga on my own and done all kinds of things but this is like we don't even know whether to what to call it right but it's called the bowspring and um, I also had a lot of problems like I have a broken vertebrae from a cheerleading accident actually actually and um, hip dysplasia because I have my babies later in life and um, so so a lot of kind of messed up stuff down there and there's certain things that I couldn't do in yoga because my physiologist said you know that's just not how your hips are that's not going to support your hips it's not going to help you and what I found is when I found Leela that everything that we're doing here is exactly what my body needs because we're working on the fascia, right? The connective tissue. And so whatever practices you do, if, if you do traditional yoga, 
this is just going to be like an extra added thing. Like my son, I think he may be coming on. He's, um, he's power lifting right now. He's doing a lot of lifting and this is going to help him with that. So whatever it is that you do, um, this is just like one more layer of understanding. To me, it's really body movement. And I, it's, I practice it all day long. <laughs> How I yeah. sit, how I drive. It's a lifestyle movement. It's a movement. It's a lifestyle practice. It's a movement practice that you can learn how to sit, stand, and walk, and be younger over time, be less pain over time, be more awake over time. Let's stand up and open those hips. I love you brought those up. So last week, everyone, we did a little sequence together where we did wide leg stance, one legged standing, cross ankle squat, phoenix leg. So today we're gonna add on Phoenix arm with Phoenix leg. So basically when you cross your right leg over, your right arm will go under. If you cross your left leg over, your left arm will go under. So whatever leg is over, that arm is under. Okay. Okay? So let's go, I'm gonna stand back now and nice and wide and see if I can angle this just a bit. Hello, Crystal! Hey, hey Rosie, we're getting ready to do a nice little, uh, uh, sequence, wide leg stance, one leg is standing, cross ankle squat, phoenix. So let's stand at earth pose, which is feet on the earth, toes down, mounds down. Go ahead and hover your heels just to engage your glutes up. So when you bend your knees, hover your heels, pull your heels back, and it will take your glutes back. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now lower your heels. Step, dig, drag, right. So dig, drag, if the top of your foot presses forward, the heel pulls back. Your knees stay bent, just like you were in a squat. Keep your arms straight and touch your knees. So it's almost like a gorilla pose the whole time you're gonna stay like this. And we're just gonna go back and forth a couple times. Toes touch, mounds touch, heels stay light, back heart lifts, dig, drag. Top of your foot presses forward, heels pull, heel pulls back to engage the entire fascial network. One more time each side, toes, mounds, heel, back heart, lift, dig, drag. Yeah, girl, keep your arms straight, full heart. Touch down, toes, mounds, dig, drag, heart lifts. Yeah, arms straight, heart lifts, good. Now step, one-legged standing, dig, drag. See hands forward, so roll your fingers in and bicycle. Yeah. See if you can get both knees to bend equally. Heels pull back, glutes pull back. Heart rises at the same time. And then really soft, toes mounds, switch sides. Heel touches down, straight arms, heart pull, dig, drag, toe press forward, heel pulls back, and both legs, little bicycle. Let a breath come out of your mouth, soften your belly. Breathe in divine love. Touch down, cross ankle. Touch, keep your hips low, dig, drag, cross. Ankle over knee, keep your knee up. Yeah, genie arms. Arms strong for heart full. So if your arms are weak, your heart's less full. If your heart's full, your arms are strong. And then little pulses, down and up. Yeah, it gets harder when we move, great job. Keep your arms a little lower, elbows forward. Yeah, look at the smile on that face, good. We'll switch like a dance. Touch, switch your arms, grab your elbows, ankle crosses, little pulses, toes down, heart up. Yeah, and you'll notice one side will be easier than the other, always, almost always. Keep your back ribs lifted. That will keep you lifted the whole time. Touch, cross ankle, and then slide and glide phoenix leg. So you'll slide it forward, not back, but 
forward like you're sitting in a chair, nice and low. And then cross your same, same leg. So if you got right over left, right arm under. Yeah. And then for those of you out there right now who are practicing with us, thank you. This is, this is making you feel good. Hey, Stephen. Hey, Don. It's making you feel good. Give us some likes. Give us some comments. Let us know. And also, I want to share, if this is too much, grab your shoulders. Grab your shoulders. Yeah. There. And you still get to feel how your shoulders widen. And you can even go side to side. Because in the bow spring, we love lateral movement. We love movement side to side. It's good for your spine, good for your nervous system, good for your body. And then genie arms, and we'll switch sides. So lift up, touch down. Yeah, cross ankles, slide and glide, bend low. And then cross your opposite arm now, left under right. And if this is too much, grab your shoulders and pulse. See if you can lift your elbows up and your belly gets exposed. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> One more time, lift up. Keep your hips low, heart high, and go side to side. So you lift your ribs even up away from your waist. And then back to center, genie arms, dig drag, and touch earth pose. And how do you feel? <laughs> Again, it's, like, it's a cardio workout. My heart is sweating, girl. I don't know. Anybody out there, dog, Steven, anybody out there who's watching and you're practicing with this, I'm like, I got, I'm sweaty, I'm hot, I'm same thing. It's like, this is our morning workout. We're actually really lucky we get a morning workout together. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Okay, it's really beautiful. And um, okay, so let's let's do one more po one more uh, little thing. So we're gonna do some hops. Um, okay. But uh, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I change my mind. Since you have that wall, I'm gonna show you some wall work real okay. quick, and then everybody at home can do this. This is so good for you in the morning, especially. Okay. And I'm gonna show way, you what you're gonna this do. This is not a wall. Hey, Leela, this is a screen. It's not a wall. <laughs> Never mind. I won't, totally, I, I won't show you wall work yet today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not going to work then. So we'll just do some hops, okay? Okay. Okay, so see hands touch. Here's the key to staying light in life, brothers and sisters. Rib cage lifted and up and open and big. The wings spread. Your wings spread from the back. Not from the front, because then the back wings get just like a bird. That keeps you lifted and flying, and your toes keep you rooted, okay? So we're going to do some hops together, okay? The idea is to keep your toes down, heels or hips low, even though your ribs are lifting up. Hop wide. Yeah. So keep your ribs lifting up. Hop earth pose. Yeah. Now we're going to hop wide. See if you can be like ninja, real quiet. Yeah. Oh, you've got the ankle issue. I forgot. Yeah. I'm being careful. <laughs> so sorry. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do just in and out. Toes, mounds. This is perfect because there's so many people who have problems with their toes, their ankles, their feet, their knees, their hips. That you don't have to hop. You can do this. It's very therapeutic. You're working your connective tissue from the toes up to your glutes. So you're just walking wide and in, feeling even now the base of your glutes. So you pull your heels back. And you feel more of your whole leg now. Can you feel it? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to walk forward and back. But if you're used to stepping with your right foot always, Step with your left foot, vice versa, okay? So, okay. toes, mounds. When I say mounds of the feet, peeps, this is what I mean. Just like an animal, you want to walk on this part of your foot 
not this part. If you have plantar fasciitis, if you have heel spurs, if you have knee problems, ankle problems, hip problems, this is the practice for you. Literally just walking like an animal on the fronts of your feet, letting your knees bend, your hips go back, and your waist go side to side. So less stiff on your heels and more on the front of your feet like an animal, okay? So it's a little bit different feeling, right, Elle? It is, yeah. So walk forward on your toes first, like you're kissing the earth with your feet. Keep your heels hovering as you walk. See if you cannot put your heels down as you walk. And one day, what I'll, I think what I'll do on one of these lives is actually bring the camera down and show. Maybe I'll do it now. Let's see what happens. I'll bring the camera down and show the feet. We'll see what happens, guys. I love you all. Thanks for your patience. So I'm going to walk. I'm going to show you, basically, toes. So what happens is you get really soft on the tops of your feet. Most everybody is used to lifting their toes as they walk. Shoes have kind of ruined our ability to feel with our toes. And so I just want to let you know, everybody, if you're out there trying to do it and it's hard, it's very normal, uh, you just want to practice. It could take you five years to get your toes to actually get going down if you've been taking 50 years to go up. So just be patient, and when you're walking, let the tips of your toes go down, the mounds of your feet go down, your heels hover, and then see, do you feel a little bit lighter? Yeah. I notice this just in my everyday walking now. So yeah. much lighter. And then notice what happens even when you take your toenails down just a little bit as you walk, and you start to kind of, you have more grip, you can push off a little bit. So when your tips of your toes down, your glutes are engaged more. If your toes aren't down, ladies and gentlemen, your butt's going to be flat. Sorry. <laughs> it is what it is. It's a system. Your body's a system. We've learned. And thanks to John Friend and Desi Springer, you know, we've learned that if your fascia, if the connective tissue isn't going in the right direction, it's just going to be flat over time. You may have a big butt, but it's going to be going down. You know, we want it to go up for a variety of reasons. Yeah, it looks nice or whatever, but the low back's protected. Your hips are open, right? You have more feeling of groundedness. So keep your toes down. If your toes, many people you'll see, their toes literally just lift up. They just stay like that all the time. And that's okay. It's just, you know, patterning and we got to work on it. But there, if your toes lifting up because you've been in high heels, I used to wear four or five inch heels all the time, go dancing like six hours, seven hours, 12 hours. <laughs> My poor toes, I broke a lot of toes actually um, through that process because veering, you know, not moving forward in life, all of that kind of stuff. If your toes are lifting up, it's often like there's a fear of not, of not being able to move forward in life. You're scared of where, uh, where you're going to go. And actually when I broke toes was in the latter part of my marriage when my husband and I weren't getting along very well. And I kept, I, I broke like I don't know, four or five toes within like about a year and a half period. And it was because I was scared to leave. I was scared to move forward. And so this practice has actually helped me heal my broken toes, heal my broken heart, heal my broken soul, really, honestly. Wow. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. So practice the walking, everybody. And Elle, thank you for being so, you know, generous with your time and your willingness to to grow and to show everybody else they can too. Yeah, and I want to share with everybody before we get going here on Pressure Free is that I've got a program starting, or a, um, a workshop this week on Wednesday. It's called Go Spring 101. It's a two-hour workshop Wednesday evening. We're really going to dive deep into the 10 parts of the body. So if you're interested, I'm going to put the link in and you can sign up. So, L, happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. Um, so yeah, I thought that um, I'd talk a little bit with you today with Pressure Free about health in general. And my first question to you is, um, do you see anything, what does stress do to you health-wise? Is there anything specific it does to you health-wise? Uh, I tend towards eating sweets when I'm stressed. 
Oh, <laughs> good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's, um, it's kind of a twofold thing. Um, when we trigger the fight or flight stress hormones, our digestive system actually shuts off. So if you ate something, your stomach could feel weird to begin with because it's not going to metabolize that food very well. And then secondly, your willpower shuts down. So when we go into fight or flight, that first flood of adrenaline, the catecholamine hormones, it's a cocktail, remember, that floods out, it actually shuts down your cortex somewhat and it shuts down your willpower ability. So that's why we'll turn to stuff that isn't good for us. Mm. And it really can lead to addiction. When you're stressed, in fact, most people who have addiction problems, it's because it starts with some sort of stressor. It's a repeated stressor. And so they keep reaching for things, chocolate, alcohol, whatever it is, because yeah. they're tr you're just trying to, you don't have the willpower to stop you from doing it. And you're trying to escape the stressful feelings. Does that yeah. make sense? That's so good. I actually was thinking about this this morning when I woke up because yesterday I went to a healer or I went to church and there was this healer there and it was this event and he's this guy. Hey, Janet. Hi, sweets for me too. Yeah, sweets are hard one, babe. But I felt amazing yesterday. I was basically just reminded like to surrender. Everything is fine if I get out of my own way, right? Everything is fine. Just take, that's why I was telling you to breathe in divine love. That's what I was told yesterday. And I was like, yeah, I haven't been, I've been exhaling, maybe releasing, but not inhaling the goodness, taking it in, receiving. So yesterday I was in this place of like, nothing's wrong. Everything's fine. I'm anything problems is my own stories. And what I found was I had an you know, amazing evening, went to bed. I woke up this morning and I had been up for probably 50, uh, 15, 20 minutes, and I realized I had lost that remembrance of oh, how wow. everything was fine. I was in my same pattern of worry about like this and that, whatever, just my same shit, excuse my language, but that I had been thinking about last week, the same repeat thoughts. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And yesterday I just felt fine, and then all of a sudden it's the same pattern. And I'm like, this is, it's just a pattern. Just it's a pattern. pattern. Right, right. And breaking our patterns is really what pressure free is about our habits of reaction. And it's amazing what can be the initial trigger that throws you into the pattern. It was like it waking be... up, it seemed like. It was almost like just waking up. Like that was what I was used to doing waking up and being concerned. And I'm like, that's not at all me. Oh my gosh, how many other people? It's just like that. You wake up and you're full of. Oh my gosh, this, 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 this. I even have coached people who wake up in the middle of the night just completely consumed with their worries. And so I joke with them that you need to keep your tool belt on all, all night so that when you do wake up, you've got your tools or, you know, hang it on your bedpost so you can yeah. grab your tools. It's like you need your, you need your pressure free tools close. And I, I'm going to share, you know, the simple tool of the smile. But the smile is so profound. When I'm when you're coaching me and I'm trying to do something really hard, do you see how much I'm smiling? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm smiling for a couple of reasons. I shared this lesson, but like I, I can't believe that I share myself on a screen like this. And now my family said, you gotta get out of that busy background that we were using last week. I was just in my living room. So I came up to my studio today, which is just the screen. I mean <laughs> it looks so great, there's though. nothing there's nothing to, sh to hide my body from all of your viewers Leela, and all my viewers. Yeah. So I'm smiling to keep dopamine flowing. Dopamine is your feel good drug and it allows your entire cortex to work for you. So a simple smile when the corners of the mouth go up, when dopamine flows, you keep willpower going. You mm. also keep your decision making ability going. So you can actually make a choice about the sweet or the piece of fruit. <laughs> uh, you can make the smiling. choice that you want. Oh my gosh. Well, I love that. The smile, it's so simple and yet it will, it will feel hard, you know, but I practice my smiling. And one of the times I started practicing, it was really, I mean, I've been doing this for seven years, but I started the practice of smiling when I drive. And so uh, now when I, when I get in the car, I just put this, it's not huge. I just kind of, I like this, just a little smile while I'm driving. And what I found is about like, tw if I, it's a longer drive, like 20 minutes into my drive, I'm suddenly elated. 
Oh, uh, somebody just gave some hearts too. I, I bet everybody it. else out there. When you're driving, do you smile or do you frown? How about who's willing out? Who's out there and willing to try a smile now when you drive? I am. <laughs> smile when you drive, and, and you can oh, pick other you times to your day. Better when you drive, smile. Yeah, I love that. It's so good. It's I mean, so simple. And just about all of us have some sort of road rage. You know, we don't like it when people don't follow our rules on the road. And, or, you know, you're That's caught and you're trying to get over hard. a lane. You know, all those little crazy times. And so when you can um, keep a little smile going, you're much more forgiving of the other drivers. Right. And really, you're protecting you. You're protecting you. Um, to bring it relevant to what's going on today with gun control and everything, I was listening to an NPR report on gun control and this gun owner that sold the gun to the guy in Vegas, he said that, you know, when, when he's, if someone comes in angry, sometimes it's just because there was traffic, but he won't sell a gun to them, you know, if they're in an angry state and then he'll try to get to the point, what, is, what was their anger, anger issue? Well, it was because there was a whole bunch of traffic or, you know, so right, yeah. he actually Usually, mentioned yeah. traffic. I thought that was amazing that he actually mentioned traffic. And then there's another study in France where 75% of um, French people in their 20s say they, their road rage began when they were children. Be, they imitated their parents, in other words. Mm. So they were yeah, imitating yeah, their true. parents. Yeah, and I heard to complain true. about drivers too, and I'm like, why are they, they don't even drive? <laughs> they don't even drive yet. Yeah. <laughs> But they're just imitating. Okay. And we, we imitated our parents. So many of our stresses are generations old. And Rachel just joined. Hey, Rachel, we love you. Hey, Rachel. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. So you're breaking generations of patterns. That pattern that you feel in the morning, Leela, you're, you're breaking generations of patterns. Maybe you observed your mother waking up in that kind of a mode. Like we imitate. Right. We imitate. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. This is what you, what you just, I just got triggered and I want to share it. I think everybody can relate to this at some point, but my mother would do this thing where she would, um, for whatever reason, some, some days would be upset and she would wake me up like, uh, lights on yelling. So I, I did something wrong, right? I didn't put the laundry in the dryer or I did something wrong to her. And so I would get woke up like, <sighs> Out of, I just, I, that hadn't hit me until just now, but I would get woke up just out of the blue where she would decide wow. like at five o'clock in the morning to start vacuuming. She was, you know, bipolar. And so just, you just never knew what to expect. And so I think that might be part of it too, is waking up like, and even in my, after I left, after my marriage, like I remember the day when I was like, nobody's going to come into my room. Nobody's going to bother me. Nobody's going to like ask me for anything, make me do something. Like that was the story in my head. And so it's still probably latent. I wake up thinking like something's going to happen. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. It's so true. All of us. That's, hard. That's hard. Yeah. It's funny how things only have to happen to us once. The power of our memory, the power of our brains. Things only mm -hmm. have to happen to us once. And it will be so strong in us to, to continue the pattern decades later. Decades. Decades. Yeah. And so, um, so the first, of course, the first thing is just being aware. The fact that you just had that awareness, Lila, is amazing. It's beautiful. I, I didn't think about that until just now. Literally, I was like, oh my gosh. It just, it just like the memory just went, <laughs> like I could, yeah. I could remember, you know, yeah. Do other people who are watching now, do you have some memory from the past? It's like, oh my gosh, that could be a trigger. Why, when I'm in a certain situation or just waking up, I'm already in a stress state. You're yeah. already in the car. State. It's amazing. Go ahead and go ahead and share here because what I find is when people share in the comments and someone else sees it, they're like, "Oh my goodness, that's me too." We need yeah. to ferret out all of these triggers. We need mm -hmm. to dig deep and ferret them out because they're the ones that are gripping us. They're the ones that are preventing us from truly living pressure free, and it's it's yeah. not easy work. Well, today I want to share with everybody out there too, in Colorado, it's the first snow today. And so driving is, you might be triggered. You might be triggered by even anywhere. Winter's coming. You might be scared of getting on the road and all that, even before you get in your car. Hey, Mark, Mark's over the East Coast. I wonder if it's, when is it going to snow over there? 
But yeah, I mean, that's it. That's what I thought about today. Um, people are going to be already scared to be going on the road before they even get on the road. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And, you know, for any parents out there with young drivers, that first snow is like every then the whole house is crazy. Like, oh, be careful. And, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I um, sat many years ago, even before I created Pressure Free, I stopped saying to my sons when they go to drive somewhere, um, drive safely. I stopped saying that because I realized that when I said drive safely, that's a trigger. Oh, so you don't think I'm going to drive safely? So now uh, I'm going to grip the steering wheel and be really, that's not helpful. <laughs> Anyone who's triggered on the road, really, if we did a little uh, um, uh, catecholamine test, we test if you've released too much adrenaline, we should probably just take you off the road. <laughs> okay. Oh you should not be driving. There's a bunch right of now. adrenaline on the highways right now, I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Yeah. And so I learned, um, in fact, um, smile is huge, but also when I drive, so I keep this little smile going. I also, when I encounter something on the road, I relax my abs. First time I did it was um, black ice. I was taking my young son to a hockey game on the highway, total black ice, all these SUVs off the road already. I'm in my little Prius. And so I really relaxed. Crystal says, Hi, lovely Crystal. way to start my day. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Crystal, for being with us. It's time for class. Have fun in class, sweet pea. Bye, Crystal. So yeah, relaxing your abs is another very simple tool when driving. And then you're, you won't white knuckle your steering wheel. And you know, when we grip the steering wheel, that does not make us good drivers. We're apt to jerk more. And jerking more on, on the first slick of snow or on black ice, you're, you're off the road. Yeah. You're off the road. I so, love it. Um, yeah, you're so, so right. So just let the abs go and smile. I do. And I also, um, a slogan, I was sharing this with, um, for anyone who works privately with me, I do something really special, Leela, thanks to watching Erin Adesso on your show. Um, I, I create a very a private, it's a secret Facebook page. And just this morning, I was sharing with one of my private clients um, a slogan I use for anything that's like turning us in a dark direction or taking us out of a game. And I, I just say, assume success. Assume success. Assume success for you. Assume success for people you are competitive with. Just assume success for them. Like mm. release, release all the little places where you feel competition. Release all the places where you feel like someone might say something hurtful to you or try to push you down or be abusive to you. It's like, just assume success for yourself that. and for them. And it's all right. really a I love it, girl. Can we, so I've got a call in about five minutes. So let's, I just want to give everybody an opportunity to know how they can uh, work with you. I know I shared yeah. everybody. I'll, I'll post the, uh, I've got Wednesday in a couple days, two days. Wednesday, I've got an online workshop for anybody who wants to experience this themselves in their body. And I'll post a link, but what do you, what do you got for everybody today? Um, again, a strategy session and I'm doing a live webinar Wednesday. At, it's kind of after yours. It's starting at 8 PM Eastern and it's a live webinar where I'm going to be, and actually I might move it to 8:30 for you. So you can do your whole thing and then I can do my whole thing. How's that? So I will, I'm going to cool. move my webinar to 8:30. So, cause I want to come on your class, but I really encourage people to go on Leela's class. This is amazing practice, and you'll learn so much in that time frame. And then, at, so that at 8.30, I'm doing a live Facebook webinar on here, and it is my eye-opener, pressure-free webinar um, that I want to really just share out with everybody. Hi, Noni. Thanks for joining. So um, I Hi. encourage everybody to Oh, I'm going to see you soon, babe. I'm going to be in uh, Florida. We are going to be in Florida next week together. So um, we're actually going to do, we'll do our show live. How cool will that be? Live in Florida. Live on, we should do it at the beach, babe. Ooh, let's do it live at the beach. That would be really cool. So, um, okay. so yeah, jump on my website, pressure-free.com. Um, and you can sign in for a strategy session too. So thank you, Leela. This was wonderful. I learned so much today. Good, good. And uh, if you have any feelings over the day about how you feel, just let everybody know in the comments later too. And I'll do the same because I'm going to work with um, the smile, the belly softening, and I am going to assume success today. Assume success today. Assume success Namaste. Today. Namaste to you too. Have a great day, everyone. Have you a pressure-free day. Bye, guys. Love you all.